E39 source, welcome to the video. Ryan Schultz with Colton Fry. Welcome. Side note, he's moved here. The 540's outside. Uh, as our first night project, we're going to be taking on the blower motor and the final stage unit, final stage resistor, the FSU, located under the dash. This is a 2000 production, February of 2000. Uh, E39 M5 should be applicable to any E39 5 series. Probably the E38 7 series, E46 would be pretty similar. Yeah, but we're going to be. Slight differences. Minor differences. We're going to be doing the instructional how to disassemble the dashboard, take everything apart to replace your blower motor. If my key's in there, we'll do a quick, quick demo of uh, why it's being replaced today. And uh, here comes the key. Damn it. I'll throw the key in into position two. This is the only speed I've been able to use for months. We'll turn it up. You can pretty much instantly hear that uh, it is way off balance in there. So let the fun begin. First things first, adjust the seats, how you will be comfortable sitting in this car and reaching up over the dashboard for the next couple of hours. I think we're anticipating about a three, four, maybe five hour job today. Well, could, be a little bit less. could be a little bit less with two people and he's done his blower motor on his 540 before. So we, we have experience with us. Uh, adjust the seats, you're gonna be reaching all the way up against the windshield on the dash, it's what, six inches below the dashboard in the middle where the windshield would touch, it's down there. Pull your steering wheel all the way out and all the way down. We're gonna have to pull the cluster for this job and that's gonna be a lot easier to get it out of there. Then we are gonna disconnect our battery since we're gonna be pulling the airbag out. Uh, trust that you know how to do that. We're just gonna pull the negative terminal off the battery. You've got the M5, it's here under the carpeting and uh, the other five series, it would be right there. Just a 10 millimeter bolt, loosen that up and pull the uh, terminal off the battery head there, making sure that it's not going to reconnect at any time during install. With the battery disconnected, the seats adjusted, the steering wheel adjusted, we're ready to start pulling parts of the car apart. Um, I think throughout this job, I'm kind of gonna take on the driver's side. Colton over here is gonna use the passenger side and the first thing is going to be to remove the trim in here. I have to happen to have the Titan line. The wood's going to work the same way. Demonstrate on the far right side. You're just going to want to grip the side and pull it out. I can't get a grip on here, so you can use a little pry tool or something. Just be careful not to trip, chip the trim here on the edge uh, because that's how big pieces peel off. Right. So we're going to peel off the uh, passenger finisher. This one right here, if you've got the M5, watch the tire pressure monitoring button. Make sure to disconnect that. Remember what the wire looks like. And then there's another piece over here. So we're gonna take those off, pick up from there. If you have a 16 by nine display, make sure that you remove this plastic piece of trim very carefully, as it has small little tabs on it that can very easily break. The navigation screen can pull out pretty easily. Um, I think they are just two, there's four, four screws that hold it in. I'm seeing some Phillips screws here. So we're just gonna pull those out. Um, jump out of the car real quick, Colt. Actually, let me clarify that to remove this trim, there, you don't need to eject the uh, to eject the display and have that pull out. If you pull up on the top first, evenly on both sides, pop that out, and then just carefully go along the bottom. You'll get it out like this. We'll show you a little trick over here. Not a little trick. But just put some towels on the floor here, and uh, we're going to put all our parts on here just so we don't get anything lost, broken, dirty, whatever. Then we have plastic cups, or actually styrofoam cups. We're gonna throw the screws. We probably have 40 different kinds of screws in this car that we're gonna be taking out. So for example, here's a cup. Here's a piece of paper. I'm gonna write down 16 by nine screen, put the screws to that screen with the paper that tells me what they are in the cup, and put that over there with the piece of trim for the display. We're gonna keep going like that. That way, reassembly will go a lot smoother. 16 by nine display is held in with four, just PH1 Phillips screw bits. Top left, top right, and there's two down here that I'm in the process of finding a thinner screwdriver for. If you just have the standard MID and stock radio, you have a quick, quick any quick words of wisdom for removal of the stock system? Um, non -nav. When you pull the volume knob, you're going to pull that straight, to, like, yes. pull straight out. You're going to want to put a Torx bit. Um, we'll have to cut this. A T6 Torx bit inside the volume knob hole and turn left and that will unlock the MID and you can pull it out toward you. The navigation display actually comes out really easily and you'll notice that the clips on the back, once you know how they work, they're also very easy to do. There's a white one and a blue one for data and power. You push down, notice this black thing right here? 
has to roll back along the far edge from the camera. So if we depress this clip on the top while pulling back on the black thing at the same time, it moves like that and then allows us to remove the connector. Obviously the same deal over here on the blue one. So we roll those back, pull these out, and set that aside in a safe, dry location. We're now gonna pull the A-pillar, these pillar uh, trim pieces off. These are Alcantara since this is an M5. Um, all the other ones probably work about the same way. Note that some pre-facelift models may not even have these Torx bolts here. You may be able to get under them and just pull them off. Uh, for reference, this facelift started 9 of 2000, but this is a 2 of 2000 and it has clips. So get a pry tool or be very careful with a flat head screwdriver comes out from here. and notice these black covers, HPS, head protection system. Those need to pop off, then revealing Torx bits will tell you the size, unscrew that screw and carefully work them out. Note that there's a clip in the middle over here that's easily broken. Just take your time, be careful and you should be fine. So a T25 is the size you're going to be looking for. Looks like this. It's just a Torx bit. Pull that screw out of there, and then we're just going to work on carefully pulling the trim out, noting that the uh, this uh, door seal over here can move, and then we just slide it out. So you're going to start on this side, get this side to pull out, and then take it like this, swing it out to the side, and then pull straight out towards yourself. Works the same on both sides. That's going to reveal the uh, A-pillar airbags, and then this hose here is actually the channel that uh, drains water from your sunroof area down to outside the car. So now we've got our A-pillars out and safely stowed away. We're gonna move on to the next two steps here. I'm gonna work on removing the cluster and the surrounding bezel. Colton's gonna work on pulling that airbag out. So you're gonna have clips for each of us. I'll try to make this magic while editing. This is what we're gonna use to get the cluster out. There are, let's see, one, two, three Torx drives. What size is that? I couldn't tell you. It's a Torx that looks like that. We can't tell you the size, apologize for that. But uh, there's three of them up there to get the, um, the plastic bezel around the cluster off. And then there's three brass screws down here. There's two on the left side and one on the right side. They have two purposes of holding in the cluster surround bezel as well as the lower dashboard, which we are going to be removing later on in this video. So pull those, put them away in a dry safe location, and we'll go from there. With those screws removed, we can simply Pry the whole thing down a little bit. Notice that there are two kind of things that hold it in place. One peg slides inside that hole. There's one over here as well. So slide the, uh, the surround trim down, then out, noting that there are some clips on the bottom that kind of sandwich in between the dash and the lower dash. So just pull this over, be careful you don't break that. There's two more over here. These are those gold screws that, rem that we removed a few minutes ago. Once you slide that out, there's gonna be three connectors. This is your headlight, halo switch, this is the connector for the uh, dimmer switch. And over here are your fog lights. So kind of remember what those look like. Make sure you poke them back through the holes during reassembly. And uh, disconnect those, then take that trim out of the car. Now we're gonna move on to removing the cluster, which I believe is just these, maybe there's supposed to be three, I only have two, um, Torx bolts that look like the same ones that hold up the, uh, the surround. So I'm gonna pull those out and we'll see where that takes us. When those screws at the top are removed, there were only two, pretty much slides right out towards you. There's three connectors in the back. There's a blue, there's a white, and there's a black one. They're the same kind of connector that was used on the navigation. So you depress that clip, roll the little wheel back, and there's your wiring right here. There's also this red little clip that just squeezes and then presses into uh, somewhere, somewhere back here that just kind of keeps the wires neat. Not that important, but you do need to remove it to get the cluster out of the car and set aside. To get the airbag cover off, you just need to stick a small pry tool up under here, especially being careful if you have the extended leather dash as you will harm the leather if you are not careful. I would even go as far as to recommend using a towel if you have extended leather. Now, you pop this up in an upward motion and that can come off like this. Put this up here and then you don't need to cut these straps as some people say. Just go ahead, unbolt the airbag and then remove this little wire right here. It's just a simple clip. Then you can go ahead and remove the airbag from the car. Being careful, it is an airbag and it does have explosive devices in it, uh, even though it doesn't have any power connected to it. Yeah, absolutely. Be careful of static charges. You didn't hold a piece of metal, whatever. With the cluster and the airbag now out of the way, I'm gonna start working on the driver's side lower dashboard. First thing I did down here with our steering wheel in the position it's in, notice this piece of leather here. This clips into the bottom of the steering column. There's about five plastic clips. Get your hands on that and just pull it down. That'll make it easier for us in a few minutes. 
Um, over here, we already removed those brass screws when we removed the cluster surround, so that is done. We have one more screw here that's hidden under a little thing that you pry out with this screwdriver. That's a Phillips drive. We're gonna take that out over on the right side. Um, I don't see anything else that needs to be removed right now. So down in the driver's side footwell, apologize for the lighting, I'm trying to do what I can here. Um, Colt, you're probably gonna have to tell me, do I need to remove the uh, little ceiling for the pedals over here? Yes, you do. All right, I've done that before. I replaced the uh, Bowden cable from the hood light. So I'm gonna adjust my light so you guys can get a look and uh, then we're gonna pull that down. Over on this side, we have gotten the airbag out and we are getting ready to remove the glove box. When you empty the glove box, make sure that nothing is inside, everything is unplugged from the port, and the glove box is completely in the down position. We can go ahead and start to remove the glove box by removing these little clips right here. What you're going to need to do is push this little clip um, like so. You're going to need to pry this little piece of it up right here with a screwdriver or your fingernail, as I just did, and then pull it just like that and pop this off. Now that. Um, is the hold, so now the strut will overextend. Um, now, we're going to need to do the same thing on the other side, just in tighter quarters to uh, undo the bottom end of the glove box strut. Then once that is done, we'll get underneath the glove box and remove the bottom of it. Underneath here, we are going to need to pull the under glove box tray right here. Um, just pull that toward you, there's little finger grips right there. Pull that toward you and remove. Once out, it looks just like that. You can go ahead, set that aside, and we can now excess our glove box bolts under here. I believe they are each 10 millimeters. Uh, loosen them, you don't have to remove them the whole way. Then open up the glove box, slide it toward you, it will come right out. One thing to note is when you remove the glove box, Right before you pull the glove box down, you're going to need to unplug the flashlight adapters. Just a simple little plug back there. Just make sure not to pull on the wires and create tension. We are now going to need to remove the lower footwell carpeting on each side, the drivers and the passenger. To do so, we simply remove this one gold screw up here, and then the carpeting pulls out slightly toward you and back toward the seat. Be very careful as there are metal and plastic clips in here that can break. Take your time, and if it doesn't feel like it's coming out, reevaluate and do it again. This is the, uh, if you will, sealing by the pedals. Note the uh, little slots there for the clutch gas and brake pedals. This comes down with about four of those uh, gold Phillips screws. This module over here, which I think might be the beeper for when the key's in, it's got two connectors there. It's really easy. Pull that out, remove it from the car. Note that you also need to remove your driver's side um, carpet kick panel. Um, Colt just removed it on this side to get into the dashboard stuff, I think. So that's just one screw, and then the whole thing slides towards the seat and pulls out. Driver's side lower dash, that's coming out right after the, uh, the ceiling in there is removed. Looks like I'm missing screws, Colt's going okay. after that there. Uh, there are all these gold Phillips drive screws and um, we did disconnect the leather from the steering wheel column. So then that should drop down, leaving us one connection which is the OBD2 connector. So once the screw's out of here, I'll show you how the DB OBD2 disconnects. What we are doing now is removing all the screws for the lower dash on the passenger side, right along this row up here. The dashes have to separate at the same time. Um, and then we can lower this and remove this OBD2 port right here. I can actually do that right now while he's doing that over there. Next, we are going to need to remove the small piece of trim right here by the glove box strut. When you do that, you are going to remove two screws, put those aside and label them. The next step is to remove these three screws for this trim right here. Uh, when you do that, go ahead and label those screws as well because they are different. Make sure you remove the screw right on the very corner here right up here, and then make sure you remove the final bolt located right here. Now that we have all of these bolts out, we can go ahead and pull the dash. You can see it's kind of falling down over here, but we're going to pull them at the same time. The OBD2 port has pulled out. There are just two little tabs that you push in, then pull it out, then push it back through the hole. It's very simple. <laughs> and then uh, we can go ahead. It helps to have two people for this step. We're going to pull the dash at the same time and remove from the vehicle.
All right, so before we remove your main dashboard, we are going to have to remove the boating cable for the center vents. That's really easy. Just make sure it's in the cold position, and then um, you are going to follow the blue cable down here, and it's going to be located right here. Now, you're going to need to simply twist up on this little tab right here, and then it'll pop right off. And just put it right up here, unclip it from this clip, so it's ready to remove with the dashboard. And now removing the four screws that are left holding the upper dashboard in place. There's one over here. There's one here back by our fog lights under this round hole that we just removed. And then there's two more over here, one and two. If you wanna drop that other in my hand, I'm gonna go put those in a dry safe location. The next step after you remove those screws is to take out this main bolt on each side. His are rather loose. In my car, they were very, very tight. So make sure you have a breaker bar on hand. Here is another time when it really helps to have two guys. Go ahead and now make sure every screw is undone. Uh, just if, if it's not coming for some reason, make sure you take your time and look again. But uh, we believe we have every screw and bolt out. We are now ready to start pulling. Be gentle, there are clips in the back of the dashboard along the back. Um, just take your time and don't break anything. Okay, things are starting to look a little bit different on the inside of my M5. Dashboard is out, it's a couple pounds, we just set it over there. Now we're gonna simply pull up on the sound editing material. Um, I think Colt would really have something to say with, uh, Make sure you put it in, in regards to reinstalling it so you don't have to tear the whole car apart again to reinstall it. Hey, it's done. <laughs> yeah, he had to do it twice. Okay, with the dashboard out of the car, let me just say it, you're looking at this thinking, show the part we just removed, thinking how the hell did they take that out of that car? And trust us, it was not easy for us either. Put it back in place how it was. So this is like the kind of the channel thing here. And um, this is very, very delicate. You wanna explain what you did with your 540? Um, when I took this out with my 540, I wasn't sure exactly how it worked. And I ended up prying up on it and breaking the little actuator arm and had to repair it. Right, so you do not want to break the actuator rod. If you notice in here, there are some baffles down there that open and close as you adjust these buttons right here and turn on and off the car. They close to prevent cold air from coming in. What you need to do is get a flathead screwdriver. So I'm going to do that and put it here. These, these were originally connected. Push this side of the actuator arm to the left towards the driver's side of the car as far as it will go. That will disconnect it from the metal actuator arm inside of here. From there, there are four of these small brass clips. There's two down here. You may have to move your wiring harness out of the way here. And then there's two in the back that you can get with a screwdriver. It's difficult to get up here. It's uncomfortable, it isn't fun. Then with some more, uh, some more pulling on it, you'll get it to come out and set it aside. In a dry, safe location then giving us access to the blower motor. There are three clips that hold on the cover. Top right, top left, center. And then it pulls down towards you. Pulls towards you like that. and slides out. And this is what has been giving me shit for the last several years. And as expected, it doesn't sound all of that bad while we're in here. Yeah, there's definitely broken pieces of it rattling. That's what I've been hearing. So now we're gonna disconnect this connector right here, which I assume is, is as easy as uh, disconnecting it. Well, you go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna need Torx bits. There's three bolts there. We'll pull those out, disconnect it, pull the entire thing out, drop our new one in, and then go backwards. Lower motor has been removed. Uh, now we just pulled the final stage resistor. You can see the difference in 10 years of technology. New one on the right, old on the left. Colt, you have a separate video regarding your 540 for removing that. When you're in here, you want to explain real quick how that works? Yeah, uh, when you're doing the blower motor, it's really easy. It's just right up here. Um, you're just going to reach up here, right behind here. Just pull it out. Just connects to uh, this cable right here. Unplug it, plug the new one in, and re-plug that into where the old one was sitting. Yeah, I mean, at this point from here, that's a four minute procedure. Okay, the motor's installed. Reinstall those three torque screws. Make sure you plug it in. You don't want to do this twice, trust me. Now we're going to throw that door back on there. We're not going to totally film all of the reinstall process unless we find anything that isn't like we should expect after taking it apart. I would recommend one thing though. Uh, make sure before you reinstall the entire dash, I, I would recommend that you reinstall your airbag and reinstall your cluster and then plug the battery in. Be wary of the airbag after you do so, but you should definitely make sure your uh, 
blower motor functions correctly. Yeah, we just did that and it seems to be fine. As okay, well. guys, we started about 6.30. It is 11.30, so that is five hours. Most everything is done. A pillars are back in place, glove box, the trim, the navigation, the airbag, everything under the dash, including the sound deadener. I vacuumed the carpets, I vacuumed the seats, I cleaned up this inner console a little bit. I have not cleaned the inside of the windshield yet, that'd be about the last thing we need to do. Everything goes back together just as you would expect it would. Um, putting the screws and cups as we did actually made it really easy to be able to see exactly what goes where and put everything back together so it's just as good as it was before. Looks like Cold even put my carpet piece on over there and screwed it in for me. So, we'll throw a key in position two and demonstrate uh, here. I noticed this motor has a little bit of a whine to it, but no more bad screwed up fan blades and bearings. So what do you say, Cole? Easiest thing you've ever done? What? Easiest thing you've ever done? Um, no. No, yeah, definitely not. But if it does need to be done, it really isn't that bad. The hardest part is that thing under here. Once yeah, you figure yeah. those clips you, out. You need a helping hand. I did it with one person, it was a real pain. Absolutely, two people makes this job a heck of a lot easier. So if you can get two people to do it, then do it, because it's a lot easier with two sets of hands, and especially two skilled master technicians here. So that's gonna end this video for the final stage unit resistor and the, uh, the blower motor. So thanks for watching. Leave us any comments, questions you may have. We'll do the best we can. Good luck.